So we're going to talk a little bit about promises. And in JavaScript, promises are everywhere. We use them everywhere. And going forward, you're going to see promises more and more. They're a really fundamental part of JavaScript. And the great thing is they're not that hard to use once you understand just how they work. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How do promises work? And how do they behave? Because no work for you today? The most part or the hardest part of promises is understanding why they're doing what they're doing. Let's jump right in and make ourselves a promise. So I'm going to actually paste in some code that you're pretty familiar with now. I'm sure we've all seen something like this, a, a standard PG module uh, pool or client. We're going to use a pool today. Pools and clients are virtually identical in the way you use them in uh, PG. Uh, the only difference is with a pool, you don't have to connect. It's a, it manages the connections for you. Normally you wouldn't use a pool in a command line program like we're doing today, but you would use it all the time in a Node Express uh, program like you'll be writing for your midterms, all right? So there is a pool. And as we open now, we can make ourselves maybe a little SQL query. And I'll say select ID and name from users. And I'll just want to get five of them. Okay. And the way I'd use this, of course, is I would go uh, pool dot query. And I would give it my SQL. Okay. And that's how you run a query. Now, of course, we know at this point, if we run this now, oops, this clear mode. It's called main.js. There we go. So if we run it, nothing's going to happen, unsurprisingly, because we didn't tell it to do anything. But I'm sure it, it did, in fact, execute my, my select statement, but I didn't tell it to do anything. So I'd have to have it do something. So we can try this. Const result equals pull.query. And let's console log that result and see what we got back. Again, and we got back to no one's surprise, we got back a promise because that's what the, uh, the PG module gives us back in the query function gives us back a promise, and it gives us back a promise pending. And that means, as you know from your promise lecture, it means, yes, I'm working on it, or I'll get, I'll get back to you when it's done. Because we do know that JavaScript is single-threaded. What does that mean? Well, it means JavaScript cannot be interrupted. In between line 10 and line 12, nothing else can happen. It's what's called non-preemptive, which means it can't be preempted, which means interrupted. So this result will start, this pool will start processing that query, and then line 12 will execute. You are guaranteed, because of the nature of JavaScript, that this line will happen and nothing else will happen in between. So of course, we get back a promise from our query. So we do the usual pattern. We do a then on the promise. And that is our basic promise pattern, promise.then. I call it result, but it's a promise. So I've got result.then. And the then method of a promise expects a function. There, there's a function. And you always get back a single parameter. We'll call it res for now. So this is your real basic pattern for a promise. A callback function, and you get back a single parameter, which you can call anything. I call it res or res1, or I can call it frog. It really doesn't matter. But I kind of like the word res for now. All right. And this then will fire when this query is finished. So let's just console log what happens. Console log the res. Okay. 
and watch what happened. Um, let's give it a try. Wow. Oh, we got lots of stuff. We got back a really big object, didn't we? We got back a rose, there they are. We got back that, but we got back a bunch of other stuff, didn't we? What we got back, of course, was a PG object or a PG query object, which is a result of our query. So we know that the query function gives us back our rows, but it gives us more information because it could be useful. It gives us back an array of the fields, each field. One of the fields is name, the other field was ID, and it tells us what data type it was, how big it was. So you get back a lot of really interesting information. But as we know, what we really care about is res.rows. And that's 99% of the time, what we're gonna use is res.rows. So res.rows. Run this one more time, and we should get back our res.rows. Okay, now let's watch the order in which this happens. I'm going to put a little console log at the very beginning of my program. I'll just say uh, start of my code. I'll put some big movie, big asterisk in front of that so I can see it. There. Let's also put one down here end of my code. Okay, now let's run this again. I'm gonna actually put a clear in front of that so it clears the screen and executes my command. It's very useful, you can go in Linux, you can go clear and then semicolon and then your command, it will clear the screen and then run your command. So you don't have a bunch of other stuff on your screen. Let's try that. There we go, which is great. Well, start of my code, end of my code, and then my then executed. There's my then, which happened after JavaScript was finished. Once again, JavaScript is single threaded. It cannot be interrupted. So this then can't happen until the synchronous code is finished. JavaScript will execute this program from line one all the way down until it gets to the end. Any asynchronous operations cannot interrupt this. So you're guaranteed by the nature of JavaScript that your code will run from beginning to end, nonstop and probably really fast. It'll get to here. Once it gets to the end of line 17, now JavaScript's not busy. Now it can check for its messages. It's like when I'm doing some work, I'm working on my car or working on something else, I'm busy. I'm not gonna check my messages. When I'm finished, I'll check my phone. Oh, look, I have some messages. In this case, JavaScript was busy. After line 17, it wasn't busy. And then it can check for some asynchronous messages. And in this case, one of the thens had fired. So that's why it executed after our main thread. Okay. So that's your basic promise pattern. Promise dot then, and then do some stuff. Rest out rows. Let's try something else. Let's do another dot then on the same result and see what happens. Well, we got two dot thens. Now, in fact, we can get three with three dot thens. There. Run it again. We got three. But that then was static. This promise is static. So once that promise is resolved, it doesn't re-resolve. You can then that promise as much as you want. And by the way, if that was some kind of insert statement, for instance, that returned a road, if you then the same promise several times, it would not insert more rows. It's static. Once the promise is resolved, that's it. You can query that promise as often as you want. That's no problem. So I'm just asking the promise, what do you got? So dot then allows me to query that promise for what do you got? What do you have in your res? So even though I ran dot then three times, it was the same information every time. I was not rerunning that query. Another point is that pool.query, it starts right there on line 11. A common misperception is that the promise starts running there when you then it. No, it doesn't. The query starts right there. It starts processing. 
it's sending that pull.query query to your computer and then off to your Postgres engine, and it will start chewing on that right away. Once it's done, it may post an event, but because JavaScript is busy, it can't tell. Until it gets to the very bottom after line 25, it's not busy, it'll check, look, there's an event from PG. Okay, so there's your, your basic promise pattern. Well, you normally wouldn't see it like this. You wouldn't normally go, you know, result equals and then result out then. Of course, what you'd normally see is something like this instead. You see pool.query and then dot then. This is the, the common way of, uh, of writing a promise. Let's give it a try again. Unsurprisingly, it's the same output. Okay, let's talk about then because the behavior of then is really interesting. Honestly, it is actually. <laughs> so let's talk about how then actually behaves. For example, I can chain thens. I could put another dot then. And I, and I also get a res because the then function, you're guaranteed to get a res no matter what. There. There we go. So it is perfectly safe to do dot then on another dot then. The return from a dot then is another promise. So by the way, if you're ever asked that in an interview, and you might be asked that, I, I ask this question when I'm interviewing candidates for other jobs, I do say, okay, what, what's, what does dot then return? What's the return of a dot then in a promise? What do they return? Well, it returns another promise. So the dot then returns a promise, which means you can dot then it. And there is a really fun term in JavaScript. It's called thenable. It returns a thenable object, which just means you can dot then it. Let's console log this res. Let's grab that. We'll just, there. Let's console log this thens res. Let's see what we get. We got undefined. Now that's interesting, but we got something. It didn't die in us, there's a res there, but uh, we got something, but it was undefined. And this is the interesting part of then and how you can predict what a then will do, okay? So anybody wanna take a guess as to why I got undefined when I console logged this res? That's exactly correct. The first then didn't return anything or more precisely, it did return something. What did it return? This function did return something. It returned undefined. So didn't return anything really means in JavaScript, it returned undefined because the JavaScript word for not there is undefined, which is a value. And you probably know this now, know this now from your second interview, you know that OBJ one bracket C is the value undefined. It's not null, it is actually the value undefined. So when you, you try to return something that's not there or access something that's not there, you will get a value, you will get undefined. Okay, so this function dot then is returning nothing, which is undefined. And anything you return from a then is available to the next then in the chain. Now that's a big takeaway from today. Anything returned by then ends up in the next then. That's the rule of thens. So if I return something in the first then, it's gonna show up as the res in the next then. So if I return five, there's anything, doesn't matter. If I run that, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get five. In fact, let's just add a bit of color to our console logs. They will do then make them look a little fancier. There. Okay. And again, there. Then array and then five because we returned something and anything you return from a then becomes the res in the next then. Now what happens technically is this then 
wraps that five in a promise, and that's what you get in the next n. You get a promise version of five, which means that the res is five. But in general terms, and easier to remember, whatever you return from the then, you just get in the next n as its res. And you can depend on that. That always works. For instance, let's say I return res.rows. And we've done this before, haven't we? Res.rows. There. Now I'm returning res.rows. That means res.rows is being returned from my then. It is now available to the next then. So that res is probably going to be my res.rows. It's a pretty good chance. Let's take a look. And I'm not surprised. That's exactly what it is. And I can have another then. You can add as many thens as you want. It doesn't matter. You can just keep on going. Sure. Now, of course, I'm not returning anything again. So of course I get undefined, but there is always an extent. People have asked me, well, Gary, how do you stop the thens? You say, you don't, you just, you just stop writing thens. <laughs> when you write it then, there's just more promises coming. So now this is, wouldn't call me do this, but it just never ends. Then always returns a promise, which means you can do something with it. We can turn this, we can return maybe an object. You know, we could even modify, we could return res.rows, maybe we can call it, you know, this. We could say rows. We could, you know, do some fancy stuff and we could say, um, and uh, value, call it value i. Sure, now we're returning an object. See what happens here. So I got some funny object. So big takeaway from today, anything you return from a then is what you get in the next then. We can take advantage of that. And we do very often when we want to want to write a function. In this case, I could write a function. I could put my pool.query in a function. So let's make myself a function there. And I'll call it um, get users. I suppose I should call it get five users, but I'll call it get, get users for now. There, get users. And my get users function is right there. I take my SQL that goes in there as well. Let me call my get users function. So get users. Users takes no parameters, dot then. You will normally see the dot then indented on the next line. So in this case, pool.query dot then, very common way. And this is what a developer would expect to see when looking at your code. They'd expect to see your promise being executed or your function executed and then dot then on the next line indented to the right. Just the common, the common pattern. Okay. So I've got a function, get users. Let's run get users and see what I get back from my then. And now I don't need to console log that. Okay. So my function and I get, oh, probably then of undefined. Oh, what happened? I've obviously made a mistake. So what is my problem here? I'm getting this error. Cannot read property then of undefined. And this is one, if you haven't seen it already, you're probably going to see it pretty soon. Um, we see this all the time. What could I have done wrong? The return value from get users is, it's nothing. Yeah. Exactly, I'm not returning, we're returning something. So I need to return something from my function. When I run get users, it's not returning anything or more technically, it is returning undefined. So, and then that means that's undefined dot then. So this error message is exactly right. I'm trying to run then on undefined. I need to return something from my function. So, I mean, I could do one of two ways. I could do, promise, make a variable and return that variable. Why not? I could do that. And return my promise there. I could do that. See, that works. That worked. We normally wouldn't do it that way. Although we certainly could. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, maybe want to then this promise inside 
and then pass it along. So we certainly could. But normally, what we would do is we'd simply return the pull query, which is what you've seen in your LightBMB project. We would normally just do this. Turn our actual promise function. So now I'm returning my result, my, my function, which is a promise. You will see this very same behavior in the React portion of the program. And you're probably going to see cannot um, execute then on undefined. It's probably because a function somewhere, and I won't play which one it is, probably did not return a promise. Okay. So now I have a function called get users. And now it's get users.then. So it's great. I have now abstracted away all of the messy details of the PG stuff. And I still have a function called get users. Now let's look, look how this works. My get users is returning the dot then. So in actual fact, I'm not returning pool.query, am I? Although it looks like it, in actual fact, I'm returning pool.query dot then. So let's go back to our original thing. We'll go promise equals return like that. And let's go return promise dot then. So now we're returning the, the dot then, because this is what's really happening. We're returning promise dot then, and then we're getting the previous dot then. So get users is returning dot then, we're essentially dot thening this dot then. Let's take a look. And that worked. So this is what's really happening. So we're in actual fact, we're returning the dot then from the function. Okay. Once again, you would almost never see it this way. You would see it, of course, this way. But just bear in mind that we are returning the dot then which really means we're just chaining dot, gen, dot thens. It's just this dot then is inside a function and this dot then is outside the function, but it's still just a promise chain. Okay. Have we a beat dot then to death yet? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's beat someone else to death here. Let's talk about when things go wrong. Okay. When promises go bad. Sounds like a, a cool uh, video. So what happens when something happens or something bad happens? So let's just pull stuff out. We'll go back to our basic little there. And we'll uh, console log our res.rows again. Okay. We'll double check, make sure this works again. And so far, so good. Okay. Well, what happens if something goes wrong. For instance, um, I say select. It's a common mistake, I think. Happen to anybody. Select ID name from users limit five. Let's go on. We've made our query. Looks good. Yeah, that limit's great. We're looking really good here. Okay, let's run our query and see what happens. Oh, wow. That didn't look good. I got unhandled promise rejection warning. Another one that we're really used to seeing as software developers, unhandled promise reaction warning, error, okay? So obviously something has gone very wrong with my program. I didn't handle rejection. So one of those uh, things with promises, you gotta know how to handle rejection, okay? Because it happens. And who wants to volunteer what we use to handle rejection? It's the, the sibling, of then catch. Wow, look at all those catches. Awesome, that's great. Yes, we use dot catch. It's the sibling of dot then, okay. And it takes a single parameter, but we don't usually call it res. We call it something else like error or sometimes just ERR. You kind of commonly see that. Same pattern, takes a callback function with a single parameter, error. So now, like, let's put our then back again here so we can see our thens and our catches. There, 
I'll put the word, why don't we console log something inside that catch? I'll write the word catch. Okay. And we'll catch our ERR, we'll catch our error. Okay, run this again. Okay, let's take a look. So I got a big long thing, but I did catch. Oh, look, that actually is my catch. So it all worked. Yes. Oh, somebody mentioned, um, Shannon mentioned or dot fail. That's a very good point. You may have seen these as well. Just a quick aside, you may have seen dot done and dot fail. Okay. But as it turns out, those are not part of promises. Anyone know what those belong to? They're very useful and you can use them, although we're using them less and less as time goes by. Those belong to jQuery. Those are jQuery methods. They are not part of JavaScript. So you can use those in $.ajax, but you cannot use them in promises. Those are for jQuery. Okay. All right. The question is, what's the difference between using callback function for error inside then and catch? Yes. Um, as it turns out, you can give your dot then two parameters, um, a fail and a success. Um, we don't normally do it that way, but that's actually great, a great point. You can do that. You, your dot then can actually take two callbacks one for error, dot then one for catch, but normally we do it this way instead. Why? It looks cleaner, that's all. Yes, you can, but we do it this way instead. Anyway, okay, so in this case, I, my catch in fact did work. My catch ran, and but I got a whole bunch of stuff. In actual fact, let's take a look. Let's do something else. Let's console log just, we got, we got here. We got to here. Because we know that when JavaScript crashes, it crashes and things just stop, right? So if I get a, 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 uh, a node exception happening, I get all the stuff on the screen and things just stop and it doesn't go any farther. Well, let's watch what happens in this program. We got to here. So it didn't crash. As it turns out, this error is a special object is called a throwable or an exception. It just has a really funny um, structure. It contains, it's an object with some other stuff in it. It's a, called a throwable. And when you console log them, you get really a lot of weird stuff. You get really a, a call trace or call stack. They're a special kind of object. When you console log them, you just get this, right? That's what you get. Okay. So I also get lots of interesting stuff um, in my object, but there's one thing you can pretty well always count on because obviously this object is kind of fun, but it's not so useful to me. But there is one thing you can always count on is ER dot message. You can almost always count on there being a dot message. Let's run it again. And now my cat said it printed the ERR dot message, which is error at or near select. And then of course it continued on. It didn't crash my, my program. Okay. Uh, the question is, does the uh, pool.query need return to pass to then? Well, um, pool. Yeah, that's actually correct. Uh, a pool query is a promise, so it's venable itself. You don't need to wrap in the promise. It is venable. It returns a promise. So, okay. So let's beat some more of catch death because catch is actually really interesting. Okay. I guess my definition of interesting is a little weird, but catch is actually very interesting. So this obviously worked. It's like you're under code. Oh, I got an error. It's like, oh yeah, I do have an error. Look at that. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's try something else. Let's just put maybe an error here instead. Just say, you know, because I don't feel like passing, maybe 
the actual error to my, to my users because it makes me look kind of dumb. I'm going to say, we had a problem. A problem. Problem. Please call the support line. Our operators are standing by to take your calls. Okay. Right. So now I got, we had a problem. Kind of a generic message. Well, let's look about the way that catch behaves because this is actually quite interesting. Let's say my query is fine, but for some reason I had a typo maybe here in my console.log. In fact, why don't we say um, we had a, a database problem? A little more precise. Okay, so let's run this one. Oh, we had a database problem. It's like, well, where's my database problem? That looks fine to me. As it turns out, a catch not only catches problems in your pool.query or the function that you're running, it also catches actual JavaScript problems, real JavaScript, like syntax errors, or probably wouldn't like that. It might not even compile. You can try that, see what happens. That's a really bad problem. Wow. Will I catch that? I don't know. Let's see what does that. Haven't tried this before. No, couldn't do that. <laughs> it wasn't that smart. Had well formed. So, okay. But it did catch my console.log. It was a, a syntax error. I made a typo in my JavaScript itself. So interestingly, this catch caught the actual JavaScript error there. Or if it went undefined dot log or something, it would catch that as well. So not only does a catch catch problems in the original promise, it'll catch anything else down the chain. So if I had multiple thens, again, so let's say this first then was good, and I'm going to print res here. Let's make sure it actually works now and we'll give it some good code. It should print res.rows, and then I should console log our res.rows, which was our rows from before, and run it. And it ran twice. You notice the catch did not fire because there was no exception. It's a common term you'll, you'll hear. It's called exception. Uh, an exception was thrown. So when something happens in code or something, it'll, what's called, it'll throw an exception. And catch is there to catch it for you. So, and they trickle downwards. So, so now let's say I had a problem in my code. Well, the first thing worked, and then my catch caught this exception, which was thrown by the second then. So sometimes catch is a double-edged sword. You can use it, but if you just have a generic message like that, you got, we had a database problem. And you look at your code and you go like, but it looks fine. And I can't count the number of times that I've torn my hair out going, what is going on here? There's a catch, but my query or my promise is just fine. What did I do wrong? In actual fact, the problem is probably someplace down here. And like, ah, there it is. So I almost always console log err dot message like that to give me an idea. And now it says, oh, console dot log is not a function. And I can go, oh, that's odd. Oh, look at that. Yes, so silly me. I misspelled console.log. So just keep that in mind. Uh, catches not only catch errors from the query or the promise function, anything else down the chain, it will also catch. All right. So that's a really cool thing about catch. I told you, catches are pretty cool. All right. One more thing about a catch. Let's do one more thing. Let's just for fun, let's put a dot then after this catch, see what happens here. Now, this is an interesting one. What's going to happen here? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. I'm kind of curious. Now, of course, we can't return res.rows here. Let's return res because we do know that this res is, in fact, this res.rows. So it's, we just pass res down the chain. And obviously, there's no rows here as well. Okay, let's run it with no errors. We've got three of them, which kind of isn't surprising. We've got 
our then one. We got our then two, and we'll call this our then three. We'll run it again just for fun. And yeah, then one, then two, then three, it ran. Okay, that was kind of expected because the catch didn't um, fire because there was no exception. So the flow passes right through that catch, doesn't interrupt the catch, just ignores it. And just, I mean, technically it just passes it along and does nothing to it. So this res just slips right past that catch and ends up in the next step. That's kind of cool. Okay, let's try something else. Let's do this. Let's have an error, one of our chains here. And now we know that the catch is gonna catch that. Let's run that. But what is our then three? Then three, undefined. Interesting, undefined. We, we did it, we got then three, we got then one, we didn't get then two because there was an error in then two, console.log with two Gs, but we got a catch and we got a then. Let's try something kind of for fun. Let's just return uh, error. Let's turn a string. Let's take a look what happened. Ah, it looks like whatever you return from a catch is also available to the next then in the chain. Now, importantly, if I had another catch here, let's see what happens. So this is error one, we'll call this error two. Let's see what happens here. Oh, well, it looks like my catch my error one happened, this catch never got fired. So the return from a catch is a resolved promise. Always, when you return something from a catch, it is a promise and it's resolved. So this catch had no chance because this catch caught everything. So there's no way in the world that catch can fire. Now, this is important because if you write yourself a function that is a thenable function, have a dot then, and you do a catch inside that function, there's your first catch. If you then re return the pool.query from your function, and when you call it outside, you expect to call your function, you can't do a dot catch. It is uncatchable. <laughs> I love that. It's uncatchable the catch has been, it's been consumed. So it can happen oftentimes, you write a function and then you call the function, do it on catch. It goes, why is my dot catch not working? Like it's just, I can't get my cat dot catch to work. That's because you were catching it before inside your function. So it can't possibly be caught again because this catch caught it. There's no way this can ever happen. Oh, we can go catch one and catch two and catch two. And once again, our catch one caught it, catch two, no way. So you may be asking yourself, well, is it at all possible for to, to force the next catch in the chain? And the answer is yes, we can do that. Anyone know how we do that? A little more advanced. This is a fun one, but uh, there is a way that you can make or force an exception, or force your um, catch to throw an exception. And you can, we can do this. We can actually, what's called throw. We can throw an exception. We can say, just throw. You can throw anything you want. We can throw error one, for instance. And that will then throw an error, which means now there's an there's a exception up in the air and someone's got to catch it. Otherwise, we're going to get the good old unhandled promise rejection as we get from JavaScript. Let's try this. There is no dot message now. So we just go console log error instead. There. So like, let's just make, uh, we're going to throw, make it really obvious what we're throwing there. Throwable. We'll call this throw there, error one, to make it obvious what we're doing here. There we go. So 
we got this. There's other ways you can wrap up your um, throw in some other, there's, there's, a, there's an error object and all kinds of things. This is the simplest way to throw an error. In this case, the error, it is the thing you threw. Right? This is the simplest way to do a throw. Okay. And the question is, why would you do this? Ah, well, as I mentioned before, let's say you have a function. It's called get users. And you wrote your function. And inside your function, you want to log if an error happens. You want to log a PG error. So get users catch. Let's log to the console. An error happened. Now other users can use this. They're going to expect a catch to happen if something goes wrong. But they can't. Because if you've caught that error inside your function, they can't catch it. So you can add a throw. So now they can do a catch, but you can manipulate the error you want to show them. They're not going to see some really long PG object. They're going to see some nice, carefully crafted message that you gave them that's probably more abstracted away from them. That's it for then and catch. All right. All right. I know we're, we're beating these to death. <laughs> okay. Let's do something else. Let's go back to something really simple here. Res.rows, catch, how we doing here? And we're not going to throw, because if we do this, by the way, what happens if we leave it like this? Let's take a look. I'm kind of curious. We're going to get, well, nothing yet, because it didn't throw. But if I have an error in here, and my catch fires, what's going to happen to me? <gasps> unhandled promise rejection. Why? Because now there is a, an exception up in the air somewhere. Something was thrown and there was nobody down below to catch it. So node says, sorry, no, go ahead, got an exception and it stopped. Nothing happened. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's talk about something else. There's a third member of the promise family. Now you notice when I run my code, there's this pause at the end, isn't there? It's like, it's just pausing. It's like nothing's happening. Like it'll eventually time out, but just like, that's kind of annoying. Oh, there it is, it came back. I don't know, 10 seconds, something like that. Okay, well, in this case, this is because I'm declaring a pool or a client connection, either one. And when I start this new pool, PG opens up this, this pool for me. And it's, it's a running pool that I can then do stuff with. But since it's asynchronous, that pool stays open because I might want to use it again. It doesn't automatically close when my main thread ends because it's still doing stuff. This pool.query is still doing things. So this pool is obviously still working. So the pool doesn't get closed when I get to here. It's still open and doing stuff. So it keeps it open. And it turns out it's open for, I don't know how long. Let's take a look. I think it was 10 seconds. Let's time it, shall we? Let's take a look. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Pretty close, 12, I don't know. Okay, anyway, but it's long enough to be annoying. So I would kind of like it to end when my program ends because I'm, I'm done. So now with a pool, there is a, a function we can use. It's called pool.end which is fine, we can use this. Now, we would never use this. Um, hold on, now I'm gonna put this one here. Let's just, so we don't need to return that there. Let's put it here. You would never use this inside an actual, there, node express program, because this literally ends the pool and it can, have, it can never be used again, it's done. So, but in a command line program like this, when I wanna go back to my, my command prompt, it'd be useful. Let's try it now. So now, there, I came back, no delay. Great. So that was useful, but it doesn't look too dry because I've got it in both places. There is another member of the promise family that will allow me to do this. So we have then, we have catch, and if someone asks you in an interview, what are the three members of the promise family, main members, what would you say the third member is? It's like the little brother, then in catch. Yes, wow, look at all those finallys. Yes, it's a finally. All right, the little brother of then and catch is finally. There. And it's a dot finally. It takes a callback, no parameters. And as the name suggests, it happens finally. 
it is the last thing that happens there. It will happen either then or a catch. It will still happen. So let's give it a try with the happy path, which is great, or then. So the final word there, let's give it a bad one. We'll do a, a select or a console log, either one, doesn't matter. We'll do the console.log, guys, I like that one. Console log here instead. There, let's get our catch to fire instead. There, there we go, console log, and my finally worked, it came back to me. So finally always works. Okay, a pool.end, no, it is not mandatory. All, um, and I will note that if you're writing a command line program such as this in Node, it's not a bad idea to have it. By the way, this is same as a client as well. This is a client, it'd be the same thing, right? But if you're writing an express application, do not do pool.end. Please do not pull pool.end anywhere in your program, okay? Bad things will happen in your code. This is strictly for command line because I want it to return to me when I run my program, okay? So don't do pull.end unless you're writing or client.end, same thing, unless you're doing an actual node program like this. Okay, we've kind of beat then catch and his little brother finally kind of to death. Does finally return promise? Ah, let's take a look what finally returns. I am curious. I am very curious. We're going to return something. Return. Great question. Let's return finally. There, let's return finally. In fact, why don't we console log? Yeah, sure, let's put a couple. Let's console log finally for fun too. Finally, and then returning. Finally, let's put a then in there, shall we? Why not? Let's do that. Doesn't really matter. We can put the pool in really anywhere. It doesn't matter. Okay. But, okay. Let's do this now. And we're going to console logs res. And we'll call this, this is then number two. Okay. This is fun. Wow. I told you it's fun with promises. Okay. We'll, we'll do a log for now. We'll, we'll keep it there for now. Okay. So we got our then. This then should do a console log. We should get down to our finally. There's no catch. We should blow past that catch. We should end up here and it will console log finally with no exclamation marks. And it should return, returning finally with exclamation marks. And then we're gonna dot then what happens here. Let's take a look. I'm kind of curious. Oh, well, look at that. We got undefined. Huh, isn't that interesting? So it looks like Although the finally did work. We, we got our finally, right? There's our finally. Like we can say the word finally, but we got it. So we got finally here, but that then didn't fire. Let's try something else just for fun. Let's return. Um, oh, grab this line instead. Let's return maybe then one, see what happens. Oh, oh, look at that. This then just caught that then. So finally does not return a useful promise. Normally you would see finally down below, just like that. Okay, great question though, I like that. I told you promises are kind of fun. Okay, speaking of fun, let's uh, do something different. I mean, databases are kind of fun, but you know, they're not so exciting. Let's try something else here. Instead of doing database stuff, let's do something else. So we're gonna do something we're gonna work on um, when we start React. This is one of the uh, models you're gonna be using. It's called Axios. So we're going to um, have Axios, you know, const. It's a module called Axios equals require. We're gonna say require Axios. Easy to use. I think I've installed it. We'll take a look. Okay. This is a very, very, very popular module for doing HTTP calls. It's like 
the known equivalent of Ajax, but way more fun to use than Ajax, okay? Axios. I'm gonna run it. It'll either crash, it won't. If it doesn't crash, it's installed. Looks like it's installed. Axios is very easy to use. This is Axios, and you can do Axios dot, bunch of stuff. You can do Axios dot get. It's like this, there. Axios dot get, and then we go dot then, because it returns a promise. Axios is a promise-based module. It returns promises. And we'll do res, and then arrow, and we'll console log our res. Yes. OK. Now let's give it an, a URL, because you need to give axe.get some kind of URL. So we'll give it um, HTTPS, oops, PS colon backslash. We'll go API dot Kanye dot rest. That sounds like a fun one. OK, so oh, I'm going to put some dots in there. API dot Kanye dot rest. OK. Let's do an axis dot get and see what we get back. Same pattern as PG, wasn't it? Then res, console log res. Let's see what we get back from Axios. And wow, we get back an absolutely enormous object. Look at this thing. This is huge. Look at this, it keeps on going. Wow, don't try this at home. Look at this. Oh, there, finally, wow. So status 200, We've got a lot of really interesting stuff back. This is an HTTP response object. They are by definition large. And wow, you get a lot of stuff. Everything you ever wanted to know about this response. The header text, what you got back. I got back status of okay. I got back a bunch of headers. Wow, I got a bunch of stuff. Look at all this stuff. Okay, some socket stuff. Wow, so it is pretty big. Okay, so remember in PG, you got back res.rows. That's what we're most interested in. It is, we're interested in res.rows. Well, with Axios, it's not rows, it's not database, it's res.data. That's the cool thing. And as with PG, 90% of the time, you're gonna to wanna to use res.data. So. Let's run this again, and this time we're going to run it with just res.data, and we get back a really cool quote from Kanye.rest. Look at this. Great. Okay. This is fantastic. Oh, I love that. If I got any cooler, I would freeze to death. Who doesn't love that? Come on. Okay. Okay. So there's real cool. I know. It, it, it is amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Okay, so I got back data, but look what I got back. I got back an object. So apparently Kanye is sending me an object and inside the object, he has a value with a key of quote. Okay, so I can go res.data dot quote. And now I should go back just the quote. Let's try that and see what happens. My memories are from the future. That is awesome. I have no idea what that means, but I'm sure it's really awesome. So yes, and don't we all do that? Okay. So now look at our pattern here. Console log, we get the res. So this res, that comes from promises, doesn't it? We're guaranteed we're gonna get res something. Okay, res.data, the dot data, where does that come from? That comes from Axios. We get res.data, Axios. Where's that quote come from? Well, that's Kanye. He's sending us dot quote. So it's good to know what's is being sent in this res. That's the promise. You're always going to have a res or result, whatever you want to call it. And then res.data, that's Axios. And the dot quote comes from Kanye. Okay. And much like any other promise, we can also handle if something goes wrong. You can do a catch. The same thing as with the uh, error. In PG, we'll get our error, and we'll just log our error. There, okay. And let's just make a typo. We'll go con ye dot rest with three e's 
just to be safe, it doesn't exist. I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist. Let's give it a try. We'll run this one. And we got back another really large object. And this is an error object. Okay. So I'm sure it has some very useful information, you know, host name. Well, that's who I sent it to. So interesting information. But once again, we know that we can almost always depend on the good old error dot message to give us something useful. I will try that. Okay. And not found. Not as useful, but it still tells me, you know, E not found, which kind of means it's probably not found. Okay. Right. And of course, as before, if I had done a problem with my error dot data, if I went const dot log here, let's make this back to a good one there. Okay. And we'll not a function. Now, once again, um, we have dot then. Now, remember we talked about the return from a dot then, didn't we? Well, we return stuff. We return res dot rows, return hello, we return some values. So if we have a dot then, I can count log the res here again. And if I return five, we know by now, if I returned just no done, say return done, done. If I return done here, we know I'm going to get done here. Okay. In my next then, there's next then. In fact, once again, we'll put our, our then one and then two here, which I always like to do. Then two, and we'll do a then one. Oh, then one, then two. Okay. So we know already that the return from a then is available to the next end of the chain. But what if we want to do another promise function inside our dot then? Let's try that. So why don't I just take this, because I'm going to use this a couple of times. I'll make that into a parameter. I'll call it const URL equals there. Now let's go axis dot get URL just to be a little more clean there. Well, now I want to do another axis dot get from the same one, but there, okay? Because we all know one Kanye is not enough. We, we can't get just one quote. We have to get lots of quotes because we can't get enough of them. So I got axis dot get. Well, I could, if I wanted, do this, do my dot then. Right. In fact, I can just take my dot then and put it right there. I could do that, couldn't I? That'd be fine. And maybe I'll do another one. I could do inside that one. I can do another axis dot get. And I can do that inside my dot then. And I could do this. So this one will happen, dot then. This one will happen, dot then. That get and dot then. And this will work. But Let's take a vote. Who thinks that looks messy as heck? Anybody? Does anybody think that looks just awful? Like a big mess? Like a big smelly mess? Anybody? Yes. You would never do it this way. Like you literally would not do it this way. What you would see, you'd see the Ben's chain properly. So that's so our first axis dot. Get inside our then. There it is. So we know that anything we return from a dot then is available to the next dot then in the chain. Well, you can also return a promise. I could return there, just like that. And that is also available to the next then. It shows up on that dot then. Way cleaner, way cleaner, isn't it? Look at that. So but when this then catches it, it's also going to get a res which is going to be a res dot data dot quote. Let's test our theory, shall we? We did. Look at this. So we got two amazing quotes, not just one. Awesome. Okay. So much cleaner, isn't it? Oh, could we use URLs? Ah, yes, we could. Absolutely. Um, 
Let me dig up another one. Let's take a look. What's another cool URL I can find? Let me try to find one. Let's paste this in here. You get back a big object. This, this particular uh, API gives you a big object back like this, right? And you get back content. There we go. Oh, look at this. But we got a cool quote. Who is this? You can't let a girl feel good about herself. It'll backfire on you. Every compliment has to be backhanded. Oh, I like your dress. But I'd like it more if you have prettier hair. Andy Bernard. Who takes their relationship advice from Andy? It has to be official and it has to be urine. Ooh, okay. That sounds like a Dwight comment. Okay. Cool. Okay. Oh, if I had a gun with two bullets and I was in a room with Hitler, Bin Laden, and Toby, I would shoot Toby twice. Name that character. Who can name that one? Anybody? Who said that? Spider-Man. Yeah. Come on. Michael. Yes. That's a Michael Scott. Of course. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Now we got, look at this. We got two awesome quotes. Wow. Wow. We should pay guess this character. Wow. Okay. We've got Kanye and, oh yeah. Look at that. I don't toss trash. I talk smack. Yes. Totally different. Anyway. So lots of fun with HTTP, right? So cool. All right. Okay. Let's try promise.all. And the way promise.all works is you can do multiple promises. You can fire them off and you can get them all back pretty much at the same time. And it looks like this. So we're going to do something slightly different here. We're going to do a couple of these. We're going to do a const. And now we're going to actually put them in variables. Promise1 equals oops, promise1. We'll make ourselves three variables, one, two, and three. We'll go with Kanye for now. Okay. All right. And give this one. There we go. And this one. We have three promises. So we're calling this URL three times. One, two, three. What we do now is instead of a act we call a promise dot all. This is a promise dot all. It is a function. Okay. Now, promise at all is slightly different in that it takes as a parameter the promises that you made. So I've got these three promises that have been made. Okay. It would give it three promises. It takes an array of promises. So it'll take promise one. one. And by the way, you will be doing this in React Week. So good to know promise about all. There. So this is taking three promises, promise.all, okay? And it also has a dot then. So it takes an array, three promises. There's a dot then. The, dot, the res is also different in the promise.all. Now your res is not just one res. I can't go res.data anymore. In fact, my res is now an array of reses, okay? So, I have to account for that. I get back three reses. Why? Because I gave it three promises. So I got three reses because I gave it three promises. So we normally don't call the parameter res. We oftentimes call it all as the parameter. Just convention. You can call it anything you want, really. It doesn't matter. You commonly see it called all. And now I have all zero. Whoops. Got it again. All zero. I have all one and I have all two, just the members of my array that I got back. So I got back an array. I've got three of them back now. Let's see if this actually works. And it does. Look at this. We're getting back. Of course, they all said then one, which is two. Let's say this is all one, all one, all two, and all three. There we go. There is our three promises. Okay. So that is promised at all. So promised at all, it has a really interesting behavior in that it will resolve. You get this then after they all have resolved, not before. So if one takes a bit longer, the all will wait until they 
all have finished. Okay, I love that. I would freeze to death. Love this. Okay, all right. So they all fire and they get all the answers back. But what happens if one doesn't work? Well, let's just go ahead and make a slight change to one of these URLs and we'll say con ye.rest again. So now one of them has an error in it. So what happens to promise.all? Well, let's take a look. And I get back a single catch. You don't get back an array of catches. Well, only one thing caught. If I had two things wrong, doesn't matter. I would still only get back one catch. So that is the catch, no pun intended, with promise.all. They all work or they all fail. And it doesn't tell you which one failed. That's a bit of a problem sometimes. So promise.all is a very special use case. You would use it when you want those three things to work as a unit. And if any of them fail, you want this whole thing to fail. So that is promise.all. They all fail or they all work. Now there is a newer one, which you won't cover today. There is one called all settled, which is pretty cool. And that does give you more granular information. So, and, uh, ah, why every time we get a different quote? Yes, why do we do that? I don't know. Let's go to that site. Let's go to Kanye's REST site. We'll ask him, why do you return us multiple things? Well, because that is the way the site works. There, look at that. Look at that. Okay, so there, okay. I still think I'm the greatest. Okay, I think that kind of says it all. Okay, all right, so that is our review of promises. Really, if nothing else, I'd like to take away the fact that a dot then and a dot catch both return a promise. So whatever you return from a dot then and a dot catch is available to the next dot then in the chain. And you can also return another promise from your dot then, which means it's also dot then or dot catch because if that second promise fails, it can also catch, all right. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the, uh, the talk on promises. All right, everyone. Have a great afternoon. We'll be seeing you all during uh, midterms, and I'll be seeing certainly be seeing you a lot during React uh, part of the uh, the program. So.